Hello, good morning. <laughs> well, good I have to say, we flubbed that and it's totally my fault. And it could even be one of those mornings where we recorded before we thought we were recording. Right? But uh, I know why I plopped back into the scene. <laughs> I'm started. so sorry. Until it was everybody who is, well, currently no one's watching, but everyone who awesome. might be watching at some point, um, we. <laughs> Like right before, right before it was giving us the warning that we were going to be live, I realized that I could, thought I could hear like the fan in Leah's room because it's, it sounded like with the wind was blowing, and I think my mind was just like, oh well, the wind is blowing. Like you're on a phone call, and then like in that moment, I realized, wait a second, there shouldn't be wind blowing, and then I said something, but it was far too late. So anyway, hi Liz, Liz found us this Liz. morning. Yeah, we didn't. I'm sorry, it's not our normal link. Sometimes we forget to schedule. <laughs> yes, Leah has entered the chat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're, so we're off to a great start this morning. I also hear you're sounding hoarse. So oh, oh, very, very hoarse. Um, I had a really rough night last night. Like I just, I couldn't sleep for some reason. Do you ever have those nights where you're just like up all night? Yes. I had one of those last night and at oh, around no. 4 a.m. I was like, well, if I can't sleep, I'm going to get up. So had you up, been, had just, you been to sleep at some point before 4 a.m.? I slept probably from like 11 to 2.30. And then yeah. from at 2.30, I woke up and, and I that's been what up. I was say, that's what happens to me. It's not that I never have trouble falling asleep, but a lot of times it's more likely I do fall asleep. I wake up at like 2.30. There, there was a day, this story is about you. I shouldn't be even be going into this right now, but there was a day <laughs> in, the, in the winter um, where I woke up at 2.30 and I just never got back to sleep. And then I just went to work and I was just like, okay, I guess this is my day. Yeah. Well, around four o'clock, like I said, I got up, I went to the living room and I'm just like bored. Mm -hmm. Even though I've got my audiobook playing, I'm like, you yeah. know, I'm entertained, but I reach over and I grab, we have a bag of bugles sitting in the, in the living room and I, eat like the second bugle I put in my mouth somehow I end up choking on so I start like horrible coughing and, like, I wake my mother up she's like are you okay she's like are you choking I'm like I just you know somehow inhaled a piece of bugle or something and like for the next 45 minutes I just sat there and coughed so yes oh my god I this lovely voice going on but, it, but this is like the second time in two years that I've nearly choked. Um, last summer, it was a bagel. Um, I, I With that one, I legitimately, like, I passed out, fell face first into my plate of breakfast. And, you like, my mom out? smacked me on the back. And she's, like, yelling. And I, her That's smacking scary. me, I was able to dislodge the bagel and <laughs> choke it up. But, like... Bagels and bugles are no longer on the menu for me because <laughs> it's weird how similar in sound those two right? things are. And it's just like that's very suspicious. So I'm going to avoid all I'm trying to think of what else you need to avoid. The game boggle, I... maybe? What? Maybe I'm trying to think of other things you might need to avoid based on right. that, that yes. word theme. So maybe the game boggle. No, because no that's... boggle pieces. I will not yeah. have boggle pieces, I promise. Um, and I do have to agree with Andrea and Liz that your hair looks great. Thank you so much. It's just, <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but thank you. Um, I did get a cut not that long ago. I don't know if that has anything to do with it. I also changed shampoo. Um, I don't know. Thank you. Thank yes, you. I will avoid all choking hazards, Mary. I will. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Living. It's bad enough to be up all night that way. Right. And I remember that same feeling of being bored. I went out to the living room. I watched mm -hmm. TV. I put on Great British Baking Show because that's, if any, that's just a very easy thing to help you fall asleep. Yes. And I ended up watching it the entire season. And I <laughs> did not plan to get up and just spend the whole night watching Great British Baking Show. Right. But. Sometimes like that's just your body is just like, yeah, I'm up. So if you yeah. see me today and I do not have a cup of coffee in my hand, I need the caffeine and the warm soothingness on my throat. Yeah, throat. I'm so I sorry. Coffee. If you see that's, me without a cup of coffee, hand me one. <laughs> that sounds painful. I thought it was like an allergy thing or something, uh, which is why I'd asked. I did not expect it to be. No, it's a little painful this morning. So no. I I don't think, like, my voice wasn't this bad when I choked on the bagel. I think because Ooh, the bagel ah. was soft. Yeah. It was not. 
So yeah, yeah I've got a great, <laughs> great sound of my voice today. Oh, I apologize. Well, you'll just keep it interesting here. We're <laughs> doing voices today. Um, I want to make sure that we do say we will not be here next week. We are taking a Lattes with Librarian summer vacation is what I've decided to call it. Um, <laughs> We've been doing this for a long time now, and it does make sense to kind of do some seasonal, not, yeah. not like seasonal breaks, but just, you know. It, Every once in a while, we need a day off. <laughs> yeah, so um, so it will be Lattes with Librarian summer break next week, but then we'll be back the following week. Um, I'm actually am going to be off work next week. That's my vacation week. I did that last year, too, and um, it was just really nice because there's the 4th of July. It tends to be this week was the hot week, but it tends to be pretty hot. Yeah. And so I don't have to go anywhere if I don't want to. I don't have to get into my steaming hot car in my work clothes after work that's been baking in the sun all day. I can choose not to do that. Yeah, it does. We're getting to the point of the summer where it is so hot. Last yeah. week was, oh, it was, yeah, so hot. it was, yeah, there's been, I, the, maybe I think next week might be better than this past, you know, seven or 10 days has been, but, um, I am looking forward to it. And I wanted to tell you, everybody, um, what I plan, one of the things I plan on doing next week. Um, and it kind of ties into what we're going to talk about today, too. Um, I have said on it before that I really like The Great Gatsby. Um, it's one mm -hmm. of my favorite books to read for many reasons, none of which I can really put a point on. But I know that one of them is the fact that it's short. So you can, can you can, you can read it a lot. Um, right. I get to, it's easier to read a lot. Um, and so for some reason, I always associate that book with summertime and, and for my own personal life, but also because it does take place in the summer and it's very hot. You remember there's certain scenes where they bring in that ice and put the fan that blows over it and they chip it off to do their mint juleps and stuff. It's a, it's a hot summer. Um, and so I, I read this, you know, every few years. So I'm going to read The Great Gatsby, do my summer reading of that, but because it has recently as we talked about, come out of copyright. I also plan to go at home and read Nick. Nick the book yes. that's about Nick before meeting Gatsby. Although someone who I trust said that this wasn't, they weren't, they didn't like it as well as they'd hoped because it didn't feel, it just felt like a story about a person who then it turns out was Nick, but there wasn't, didn't no. feel like it was based enough on the actual Nick, but yeah. You know. And then this one who, gosh, I should have read the description before I uh, came on here today because I kind of forget. It's the Chosen and the Beautiful, and this is about Jordan Baker, who okay. is the uh, other Daisy's friend in The Great Gatsby, and all here. She is has money, education, a killer golf handicap, and invitations to some of the most exclusive parties of the jazz age. She's also queer and Asian, a Vietnamese adoptee treated as an exotic attraction, and I believe there's like a magical realism aspect to it as well. Like I think there's like something fantastical too. And sorry, one more. <laughs> the graphic novel adaptation that came out. Um, this is okay. just, you know an adaptation of the the story. Uh, you know, there's nothing new about this, but it's just it's a graphic novel. So I'm going to read those while I'm off. I'm going, and then I will watch The Great Gatsby, the Bob Lerman edition, because I really like that. That is, you're going to be like all Gatsby all the time. Yeah, I just figured I had been wanting to read these and hadn't gotten around to it. But part of it was like, well, I want to reread the actual Great Gatsby. And then, yeah. And then I thought, well, I'll just do it while I'm on vacation. That is awesome. That's an awesome plan. Not So you're not planning on spending time out in the, the heat at all? <laughs> No, I don't think I'm, and I'm going to go see, I have tentative plans to go see that um, Paramount costume exhibit that's at the Decorative Arts Center. Oh, yeah. I really yeah. want to go see that. And that's one of those things that um, the hours are understandably limited. So it'd be nice to be able to go on a weekday when, you know, I'm not at work. So, um, oh, Andrea says she should read The Great Gatsby along with me because she hasn't read it since high school. There are also good, well, I haven't listened to them, but I'm assuming there's good audio versions as well. <laughs> You know, I haven't read that. I was in middle school. I wasn't, we never, that wasn't one that was ever assigned to us, like in high school. I read it on my own when I was in middle school. Um, and I read it at the very beginning of summer as well. So yeah. it was actually, I was working on it. Like I had to put it down to go play my clarinet at one of the graduation ceremonies because I was in the <laughs> band. So we had yeah. to go to all the graduation ceremonies, even though yeah. it wasn't 
And I was like very annoyed that I had to go to the graduation ceremony and play my clarinet when I wanted to read. So <laughs> that's what I remember about. I remember that more about The Great Gatsby than any of the story. Any of the book. And I don't even, it's just become one of those like American classics. And like I said, I've read before that like one of the actual reasons why it's become an American classic is because it is so short. And because if like you're looking at your high school syllabus, what's the one thing you think you can probably tackle? Is it going to be the Scarlet Letter, which is written in this, you know, older style and is also relatively dry and boring? Or is it going to be this? I was, <laughs> which is, yeah, I yeah. was disappointed with the, the the Scarlet Letter, like when I read it, because like you hear references to it so much. Yeah. And I thought the story would be really good. Yeah. And it wasn't like like, you know yeah. what happens. Like none of it's a secret. Like, you know what you're you're in for. Yeah. But I just expected the story to be more like compelling and I was a little disappointed with it. Um, I understand. And there's got questions about the the costume. Is it movie costumes? Oh, I think Mary had that. Yeah, and yeah, it was um yeah, it's Paramount Pictures. Like so yes, like movie. I, I don't I haven't read that much about it. I was just gonna go see it, but I did hear that they have the dress. This won't matter to Mary, so that's fine though. They do have the dress that um, Kate Hudson wears in How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days, that uh, gold. That yellow one? Yeah. Yellow one. Yeah. So, um, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I, a few years ago, I was, I don't even remember what I was reading, but I saw where the shirt from <laughs> Pride, the Pride Spring and Prejudice. Um, oh, sorry, go ahead the Pride and Prejudice shirt that, that Darcy wears when he dives into the water was on tour. And people were like, love this shirt. Like it, it, the shirt was on tour. Oh my gosh. I'm sure other stuff was too, but the shirt oh was in the collection. I was just like- That's awesome. It's great really? when there's like one iconic thing. And, I, and I'm, I'm sure there's real, a lot of really cool stuff in this collection, but that's, I've heard of that dress because you just, you don't even have to have seen the movie. You just, you've seen that poster. Yeah. Um, when you said the shirt, I thought you were going to talk about that shirt, that ruffled shirt from Seinfeld, which I oh, think is yeah. like the Smithsonian. <laughs> yeah. No, this is this is the Darcy shirt. <laughs> nice. That's really awesome. Um, so we were one thing we were going to talk about today was because it's halfway through summer reading. Yeah. We're talking about how it's getting really hot, and then my Great Gatsby reading about books. We were going to talk about reading, summer reading. Summer reading and reading in the summertime, and I'll let you go ahead. Well, last <laughs> week, I um, it was really hot, and I kind of just picked out a book at random because I liked the author. Like, mm -hmm. well, I'd read one of her books before, and I was like, I want to give her another try. Mm -hmm. So I checked out another Sherry Sherry Lapena book, mm -hmm. um, an unexpected guest, but it takes place during this like snow storm that turns into an ice storm so like all mm -hmm. of these people get stranded at this like bed like this mountain retreat okay. yeah. um and then one by one they start dying okay. um, yes. but it was just like they they talk about the weather constantly and you know yeah. they lose power and everyone's cold like it's it's like the mm -hmm. the weather is a huge part of the story yeah yeah and you know it was really nice you know climb in the car when you're so hot and turn on the air conditioner and then have them start talking about the hearing yes. the sound of the wind blowing outside and the cool yes. it kind of helped you like maybe the hot heat isn't so bad i right. much prefer this than being stuck in a snow a nice storm right now yes so yes. it kind of helps you tolerate the heat a little bit yes you can, or you could just like that way you could just like imagine it and try to feel it a little bit you yes. could just be like oh if i were in the ice storm right now like for the first like three seconds, I feel really good. <laughs> like my shirt wouldn't be sticking to my back. Right. Right now. Yeah. I would quickly begin to uh, experience hypothermia, but the three seconds before would just be yes. so lovely. Yes. I yes. sometimes even go back and look at my pictures from winter time. If we've had like a warm winter, it doesn't work, but like this winter, um, sometimes like I'll go back and look in February, you know, what my yard looked like when I was sh out there shoveling snow, my back was hurting, mm -hmm. work was closed. And like, now everything's like brown and dry <laughs> um, yeah. and hot. But sometimes I'll look at those pictures and I'll be like, oh yeah, I remember how that felt. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan uh, of yes. the, the opposite season. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, so weather is unbearable. <laughs> yes, I think that, that makes a lot of sense and is really smart. Um, I brought I brought some cold and wintry titles as well, but also. Um, one of the things that I have done the past few summers just along those lines is uh, I've watched the TV show Fargo, which I realize is not a book, but um, it's, we, it's just- You can check out movies and TV shows. Exactly, I know, I know, yes. It's all it's related. Just, right, so <laughs> the, I recommend the TV show Fargo if you're feeling very hot um, because it's really good. It's a really good show. It's an excellent, it's excellent to watch regardless, but given the setting, it is always just like, there's snow everywhere, there's ice everywhere, all the cars are like salt covered and dirty. It's just very realistic winter time. And um, so that could also, if you're one of those people who's like, well, I'd rather be here than there, that could give you a little bit of that feeling. Um, I, also, I also brought some, well, okay, so there's two sides to this. We were talking- Mary asked if we've seen the latest season yet. It says it's probably the best. I actually- it's not. I haven't seen yeah. the latest. Have you? I haven't yet either because I was saved it for this summer. So I could watch it when it was on out. So, I, think, um, I think it's on the DVR too, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I, I will, I plan to watch that this summer, maybe even next week. Although I am one of those people who sometimes can build a list of fun things to do on their vacation that isn't insurmountable. So I probably shouldn't also plan to <laughs> an entire series of a show if I'm planning on reading four great Gatsby related books. Well, the, um, well, the graphic novel you'll probably get through quickly. That'll be quick, you're right. And Great Gatsby, you've already read a few times. I've already read, that, that will go quickly, fun. yes. So <laughs> maybe I do have time. Yeah, sure. Um, one, one, another like wintry seeming book. I own this because um, I was excited about it and then I saw it for cheap, which is not the price on the cover. This is like a bargain book that was not the price on the cover. Um, it's called Migrations by Charlotte McConaughey. And I think it came out last year. Um, and it, when I talked about it on the show, it was because it was a new release and it fell under that genre of cli-fi, climate horror yes, fiction, yeah. <laughs> climate fiction. Um, and this takes place in uh, remote Greenland, where she's going to find the world's last flock of Arctic terns and track their final migration. But there's um, night terrors, uh, secrets, uh, her quest threatens the safety of the entire crew. What is she running toward? What is she running from? So anyway, but because it's about um, like this final migration, that's why it falls in that like sort of climate, climate yes. category, but the cover, Looks very cold. Lots of it does absolutely icebergs. So, um, one of the books that I I haven't read it yet, but I'm really looking forward to it, and I'm trying to find the title. So, ignore me as I, my eyes just are not with you. Um, well, if you're not looking deeply into my eyes, I feel <laughs> offended. It's called Endurance: Shackleton's Incredible Voyage. Um, like just the story it's Shackleton and he tried to um he had a whole crew and they were uh yeah. they trying to get to the south pole that's okay. that's what their goal was they didn't mm -hmm. succeed and, but um but like because they get stuck in the ice and like just the story is really kind of incredible like everything that happened like I've heard some details like someone told me like some of the stuff yeah I've always been like that sounds like fascinating like I want to find out more yeah um, so I never have but I think this might be the summer that I tackle that one because depending on how hot it gets yes yeah depending <laughs> on how hot it gets and like all the, that 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 you news we were hearing about the heat dome over the northwest you were just like oh my god thank god we're not them but I know yeah. and also uh, the thing about that when I was reading some of those articles I've always it's not unusual for a librarian to feel like they might belong in the Pacific Northwest. I believe that that might be actually pretty common throughout our profession. But one of the things I didn't realize when I was reading some of those articles um, is that because it's typically cooler, it's not uncommon to not have central air. And okay, I had yeah. not thought of that. And so one of the reasons why people are suffering so much, not not saying this in like a blaming way, but one of the right, right, reasons right. why it's so bad is because people aren't equipped. Same thing as when Texas got the cold and the ice storm, they don't have heaters. Right. And, you know, yeah. they don't have like the, the heating systems that we're used to maintaining. Yeah. Um, but apparently that's sort of the case up there as well. Not everyone's going to have central air conditioning. And I was like, oh gosh, I'm glad I didn't move there under the impression that I was going to have central air. And then right. I didn't because that would be devastating to me. <laughs> 
<laughs> I saw I saw a, a video, um, you know, it was it was it was TikTok, things that feel like they they are illegal, but they aren't. And uh -huh. showed this woman, she had set up a swimming pool in her living room and was sitting in the little swimming pool filled with water in her living room to cool off. So I'm that would be me, up there. but also with that, if they even still had it for sale, bags of ice from the store in the swimming pool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, um, oh, yeah. yeah. Um, another, when you, you're talking about the Shackleton book that remind me of this one that I read about, which I have not read, but it's called The Terror by Dan Simmons. And it's an atmospheric horror historical novel, which mm -hmm. have novels like this have caught my attention recently, even though I haven't read any of them yet, but I have a short little list of them for myself, but it's based on the true 1845 expedition to find the Northwest Passage. And so it's about the, which happened in the winter time. And it's about these, um, you know, just the paranoia and the desperation that people are pushed to in that, in those circumstances, but also about whatever is stalking them from the ice. So that's like the horror element yeah. to it that's yeah. not real. Um, but so it's called The Terror by Dan Simmons. And I thought that sounded, I don't know, just entertaining. <laughs> yes. Mary is agreeing with you. She well, she's verifying the information you provided. Her okay, friend you. I also said that. that it's true. People out there don't have central air, and they're considering uh, window units and other solutions. Yeah. I um, I lived in Japan for two years, and the part of Japan I lived in because Japan is really long, and parts of it are very cold, and parts of it like open yeah, it expands warm, this way. like almost so, tropical. Yeah, it just has a variety of different. Uh, weather situations going yeah. on. But where I was was very similar to what we have here in Ohio. Very, very hot, humid summers, mm -hmm. very humid, um, and cold winters. Mm -hmm. And my house was not really insulated mm -hmm. and did not have central air. They mm -hmm. don't have like heating, like you had to heat the house with like kerosene heaters and you turned it off when you were gone. And I would have to put things in the refrigerator so that they didn't freeze. Because if I left them out on the counter overnight, they would freeze. Um, but I'm just like, how do you live in an environment with all of these seasons and not prepare built not engineer something right. that yeah. can protect better protect you from the native and predictable climate <laughs> right yes like every single night i would have to drain my pipe so they did not burst um and like i i came home for christmas one year and you know i was going to be out of the country for a couple of weeks because i was also i we did i came with students and we went to yeah um, Madison, Wisconsin for a visit, and then we went to Washington, D.C., and then they came home, and I went home for a few days okay. to visit family. Yeah. So, so I was going to be gone for a couple of weeks. I unplugged everything that I, you know, in the house, yeah. including the toilet seat warmer, because when it's that cold, you have to have a warm toilet seat, right? Because yeah. can you imagine sitting on a cold toilet seat? It's, well, you can't, you, it happens. Everywhere. It does, but not. I've never had to do it in a place where water could freeze overnight. Right? Well, <laughs> the toilet seat warmer also keeps the water in the toilet from freezing. Uh oh. So, like after my my flight, and you know the train to the trains from the airport to the train station, and then the train station uh, to the you know I got on the bullet train that went north, and then from there I had to get like a two hour bus back to my village. Um, I got home and it was like 9.30, almost 10 o'clock at night. And I go inside and my toilet is frozen. And I just, I I think I just sat down and cried. And I was just like, what do I do? <laughs> so I had to pull my kerosene heater into the bathroom, which was um, really not it, very small. The bathrooms are like tiny. Yeah. Um, it's really room for a toilet and a small sink, not even a full size sink. Um, so I had to pull my heater, my kerosene heater in there and leave it in there like overnight to try to melt the toilet um, so that I could use it the next day. Oh, oh, poor Leah. But that meant that I didn't have like the kerosene heater to use in my bedroom. Right. So they have these heated tables. Um, it's called a kotatsu. And let me tell you, they're the best things in the world. Um, it's a table and like the top comes off 
So in the winter, you can put a blanket over it and the blanket then keeps like all the heat under the table. And oh, in the sure. summer, okay. you just take the blanket off and you use yeah. it like a table normally. Yeah. But there's a heating element underneath the table and you, you turn it on. So like, I think I spent that night underneath the table sleeping with the heating element on. Wow. It was so cold and my toilet was frozen and I was just very sad. Well, I will say maybe they don't have like the indoor climate control that I was conceiving of, but I don't have a toilet seat warmer and I don't have a heated table. So they come up with other solutions, but. But you also don't need a heated table because things in your room are not below freezing. So. No, that's true. You're right. I can't imagine what I would use a heated table for in my, right. in my life, even in the winter time. I don't know. <laughs> that's very interesting. It is. Um, it was. It, I, I, I did. I very much love the Kotatsu. It works because like you're sitting on the floor, so it's not eating like, right. a huge like yes or cubic whatever. Right. right. It's already is, but, a different table situation than we have here anyway. Yeah. You're sitting on the floor. So yeah. um so it was it was just that that was a rough night there. <laughs> I'll say. I'll say. Mary says that that book I mentioned, The Terror, was also made into a pretty good show. I did not realize that. So uh, if you're not into reading it, perhaps you can watch it. Mary, do you know, it doesn't matter if you don't, uh, what station that was on or like any more information, like any more information about it. it. sounds like it might be on sci-fi or something, but um, let's see. I also wanted to, what else do I have? Um, another thing about cold, icy and cold books is that they don't necessarily have to take place on earth because space can be really icy and cold. Right. Yes. Um, so that's kind of an interesting thought. And I don't have necessarily one about the icy cold reaches of space space, but there is a um, sci-fi book called, hmm, where is it? <laughs> oh wait, okay. The City in the Middle of the Night by mm -hmm. Charlie Jane Anders, I think. My handwriting, that's what my handwriting says. Um, and it's about a planet somewhere else um, where one side, there's a scientific reason for it that I didn't bother trying to understand for purposes of this conversation, but where one side of it is like blazing hot and the other side is like a dark frozen wilderness. Maybe it know. doesn't. Maybe. Maybe it doesn't turn. As it does its revolution. Maybe so. I think or, it was tide bound. <laughs> it was what? I think they said it was tide bound. So maybe that okay. does mean that they're, I don't know. Um, and so a girl is banished from the hot side to like the frozen cold wilderness. And again, that's a sci-fi novel. So um, the city in the middle of the night, so not a way to escape the heat and to escape earth. If that is also something you feel like we need to do. <laughs> find, find other height planets to inhabit. Yes. <laughs> oh, and Mary says the show was on AMC. Thank you. I didn't realize that. Yes. Um, I, being cast out into the, the, the frozen reminds me of uh, Clan of the Cave Bears. This mm -hmm. isn't, I did, I, I, I made a reading list that we'll post later for books we're talking about. Yes. Um, but uh, I, have you ever read the Clan of the Cave Bear series? No, you've told me about it though, um, because I know you really love it um, and reread it and stuff. Yeah. But I've never read it. No, there's there's a, a part where um, one of the characters, I'm not going to say who, gets cast out, and they have to um, survive on their own during the winter. And it's mm -hmm. uh, I bet that's rough. <laughs> that sucks, but yeah, they manage to. <laughs> so yes, um, but it's just like you know fending for yourself and finding like if I were cast out from society and I had to live on my own in the winter and like hunt my own food and build my own shelter and uh, make my own blankets like bye bye Leah like, <laughs> well, like I that's know. what would happen yeah. just, like my mom watches that 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 series oh what what show is it on like I think it's called Alive, where Alone. Alone. That's it. I never it an A. Alone. Um, there, people are cast out into the. Is it Canada? Is is Alaska? Alaska. Yeah, Alaska? If Andrea is watching, and if it is Alone, if Andrea is watching, I feel like she can clarify for, for yes. us because I think she's watched. She's watched it. I, I think it's Alaska. 
Yes, definitely alone. I, I okay. didn't know that. I was like, alive didn't sound right. Well, it's the only A word. Right, I right, right. And they're trying um, to stay alive. <laughs> it's, it's alone. And they're cast out into the, and I really do think it's Canada. I'm not Canada, Alaska. I really think it's Alaska, but it could be Canada. I don't know. It's very cold where they are. And they've got two. Um, oh, it depends upon the season. Okay, they different places. Maybe that's why I'm confused. But they've got to like survive on their own. And it's just yeah. fascinating to watch what, what they're able to do. Yeah. Uh, different places, different seasons. All right. It's my confusion. Thank you for the clarification. Andrea. Yeah, I couldn't. I mean, I think it, that's clear to anyone who's known me for maybe five or seven minutes is that I couldn't make it. I couldn't, it couldn't happen. Um, I'm a delicate flower. I need electricity and air conditioning and central heating. Like without it, like I don't want to time travel and go back and give up plumbing. I am, I'm not cut out for that life. No, and Melanie says that if she could be cast into a cabin with a full fridge and a wood stove with a supply of wood and books, she'd probably be okay. I don't know how to use a wood stove. I presume I, I could, think be, I could figure, figure it out. out. But also, it better be functional and I better never have to clean it because I don't know how to clean it and I don't want to be the room to be filled with, you know, carbon monoxide or whatever. Um, They've been in Patagonia, Mongolia, and Vancouver Island. All right. Um, and the other thing about being cast out, and while, yes, there's many more pressing concerns, it's just also the insects and the bugs. Like, yeah, I also fend, fend for myself to stay alive, but, like, there's just so much I don't, I also don't want to deal with. And that reminds me, I actually have, like, a... It's not as long, but like a flip side list too of like books that if you're gonna lean into the heat of summer, Ooh, yeah. you know. Um, and they're always the hot. The hot books are always like dist disturbing to me because I never want to be that hot, even in the winter time yeah. when I'm reading it. I want to be that hot. Um, but a couple years ago or a few years ago, I read um, the Lost City of Z. Um, oh yeah, that's about a tale of deadly obsession in the Amazon. It's a true story, historical book, and. Um, I read it in August and it was very hot in real life. It was very hot in the book. They were in the Amazon. And obviously what they were going through was much, much worse than my personal life. But like it somehow like <laughs> it made my own life worse. Like it yes. felt, it didn't like read what they were going through. And they're like, well, at least I'm not in the Amazon. I was like, oh, I'm practically in the Amazon. And on top of that, I had a practically really, in the Amazon. I had a really bad bug situation. The, like that August, like my, my bug, yeah. I forget what year it was, but I think it was like my my first full summer maybe in my house. And so like I was still getting on top of like, when do I need to spray? When do I need yeah. to deal with these things? And um, there were just, I had like a really, really big spider in my house. I had really, really little spider in my house that I walked through the thing and I got in my hair. Um, and I also had a, a spoiled banana that I won't get into the details of that it, I ha it looked right. fine on the one side. The one side was fine. I yeah. wasn't like I had like a rotting banana. Well, I did have a rotting banana on my counter, but I didn't, didn't know. I realize it because it looked fine. A spot on the bottom on the underside that I didn't know about. And so I was reading this book at the time and I was just like, Ugh. <laughs> so if you want to lean into the heat, the humidity and <laughs> you know, the Amazon river with freaking things in it and being covered head to toe in bites all the time that you just hope don't turn into a disease that's going to kill you no 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 i i will pass on that because <laughs> i i i just i think feel like it would compound what you're already feeling and it just you would be miserable i would be absolutely miserable reading. that's what happened to me liz recommends dry Liz, who is that by? That's not the one by Jane Harper, is it? That's the dry, but maybe it's the same dry. Could you clarify? But she recommends dry as a good hot book. Um, I also, again, I also have a list, but I have to type it because I never can seem to get there and write it out to begin with. <laughs> um, but when did I want to... Um, a classic that's kind of a pretty summary book is To Kill a Mockingbird. Um, but there's a lot, anything set in the South in the summertime. Oh, Jared Shusterman and Neil Shusterman. 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 Um, thank you. Thank you for that, for clarifying that. Um, anything set in the South or like in a tropical 
thing is going to give you that heat and humidity that will yeah. warm you up. So that's what a lot of the books on um, my hot list are, but they were books that sounded especially interesting or not just like, this is a book set in the South, this is a book set in the South. <laughs> um, and still, if you're wanting cool weather books, mm -hmm any Christmas book is going to have okay. snow. <laughs> like it's just, there's, there's something about Christmas. That's books true. And how frequently there are snowstorms or you, know, you get stranded in a cabin with a handsome mm -hmm. <laughs> stranger. Like yes. there's something about Christmas books and it's July. So Christmas in July is a thing. It is. And so Christmas movies and Christmas love stories will help you escape the right the, the weather. And we both know we've ordered a whole slew of them already yes. that will be published in the fall. And we've even gotten one in. I forget who it's, it's by. I want to say it's like Dear Santa or Santa something or I don't know. Um, it's amazing how many Christmas books I've already ordered. Just mm -hmm. It's and the Santa one is already on the shelves, published this summer. Definitely a Christmas romancy, you know, right. yes. type of book. It's already there. So, and actually, now it's a great time to pick, check out our Christmas book section because um, they aren't all checked out. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but at Christmas time, everyone wants to do that, but it's only really like a four week period. And so, you know. <laughs> We, we do often like pull like the paperbacks because you know, most people don't want them like in March or April. So you're like, once they're back on the shelf after Christmas, we'll pull them and put them in storage and pull them out next yeah. year when people are checking them out. But we should probably put some of them back out for July, for Christmas in July. July. <laughs> and we, right? And there are hardback ones that are on the shelf all year. Oh, all year um, round. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, the vast majority of them are out all year round. It's just um, every like the, the paperback ones that we will mm -hmm. will pull because the paperback area isn't very big. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's been great to talk to you today. I'm so sorry you had such a bad <laughs> night and early morning. Yeah, thank you. I, I hope we both hope can my stay cool. throat feels better soon. <laughs> And I hope everybody can stay cool now yeah. and next week. We will not see you next week, but in two weeks we'll see you and we will post my chicken scratch notes and Leah's thoughtfully typed beforehand notes um, <laughs> on the comments. So you can come back and visit that when you're desperately missing us next week. Yes. You can watch our full archive of videos on our Facebook page as well or on YouTube. Or YouTube channel. Oh. Yes, our YouTube channel is chock full of Allison and Leah bumbling about books. Uh-huh. <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> well, well, it was great to see you. Yeah. And thank you everyone for being with us this week. And uh, we hope to see you in two weeks time. So bye guys. Bye. -bye.